Good morning, Kingdom Kids. Welcome to Sunday School. I've been gone for a few weeks, thanks to Miss Yvonne giving me a break. But I've missed you all and been praying for you the entire time I was gone. I was able to spend some time with my family and go to the beach. And I even got to bunny sit for Tanner. So thanks for that, Tanner. I loved being with Timmy while you were gone. And uh, we've just been enjoying some peace and quiet here. I hope you guys are all doing well and healthy. Today we're starting a new unit in Sunday School, and if you can guess what it's on, then you've been paying attention. <laughs> it is on obedience to God. And the first story that we will be looking at is a story about Joshua and Caleb. Now this story is found in the book of Numbers. And do you remember what Testament the book of Numbers is in? Old Testament or the New Testament? Well, turn to your table of contents in your Bible and find the book of Numbers. Take your finger and trace it from the book's name, Numbers, over to the page numbers. Turn to the page and you'll be at the beginning of the book of Numbers. We're gonna be in chapters 13 and 14. I'll give you this answer. The chapter number is the big number. The verse number is the little number. Now, before the Israelite people moved to Canaan, God told Moses to send 12 men to scout out the land. Moses said to them, find out what the land is like, bring back some fruit, discover whether the people are weak or strong. Is the land good or bad? And are the cities surrounded by walls? These are all important things to know. Can you cultivate the land and grow your own food? Is there protection in the city? The scouts were gone for 40 days. When they returned, they brought back pomegranates, figs, and a cluster of grapes so big, the two men had to carry it on a pole. Two full grown men had to carry these giant fruits on a pole. The land is good, the scouts said, but we also saw well-guarded cities full of many people. We can't attack the people because they are stronger than we are. We are like grasshoppers next to them. Have you guys ever caught a grasshopper? They're teeny tiny. I could fit a bunch in my hands, right? We are like grasshoppers to those people. They must have been huge. The people cried and complained. Why is the Lord bringing us into this land? It would be better to go back to Egypt or die here in the wilderness. Now remember, these are the Israelites that, that God spared from the Egyptian rulers. They, the Israelites were in slavery. They were working so hard that they were dying from exhaustion and starvation and disease. God spared them using Moses as his servant, his obedient servant, to take them from Egypt into the land of milk and honey, right? These are the people. We've studied this before together. God told Moses to obey him. Now two of the scouts, Caleb and Joshua, told the people, if God is pleased with us, he will bring us into this land. The Lord is with us. Don't be afraid. The people believed the other men and threatened to throw stones at Caleb and at Joshua. Two men stood up, proclaiming obedience and faith in Christ. But the people wanted an easy way out instead of having to stay and fight for this land. And they chose to ignore this encouragement to trust God, the God who would save them from Egypt, from slavery, from bondage. And they threw stones at these faithful men. God told Moses that none of the adults who disobeyed him, except Caleb and Joshua, would enter the land he promised. The disobedient people would live in the wilderness and the, adult, the adults would die there. Their children would grow up to be shepherds and after 40 years, Caleb, Joshua, and those who remained would enter the land. Because of their disobedience and their lack of faith in Christ, their punishment was they had to roam in the wilderness. And the adults that disobeyed, that did not trust God, would not enter the land that God had promised them. Moses told the people what God had said and they were overcome with sadness. We were wrong. We were wrong. Let's go into the land God promised us. Moses warned them not to go, but the people, the people disobeyed again and they dared to enter the country anyway. And when they did, the Canaanites attacked and chased them away. Now this is a tough story. God called 
the Israelites to obey, to trust him, to have the same faith in them that he had faithfully bestowed over and over again, these gifts of rescuing from bondage, of being rescued from the Dead Sea. Remember the Red Sea, remember God parted the Red Sea so they could cross. God led them by a pillar of clouds at, in the day and a pillar of fire at night. God provided for the Israelites all the way through this journey and then they turned their back on him. And they lost this opportunity to go into the land of milk and honey. And so what I want you to see here is how important it is that we obey God. God is a good God. He is a loving God. He does not want to hurt us or harm us, but he gave us free will to decide whether we obey and trust him or not. And just like when we choose to disobey our parents, there are consequences. There are consequences when we disobey God, but he loves us. He cares for us and he still provided a way for the people who did not disobey, the people who had faith to enter this land of Canaan one day. So I just want you to see God's faithfulness and how important it is to obey and how excruciating it is when we don't obey. It is hard to have faith sometimes, especially right now in the midst of this pandemic and being separated from friends and family and our schools. It can have hard, it can be hard to have faith and to obey Christ, but we know he is our overcomer. We know we have hope because of what he did on the cross and raising again, being risen from the dead three days later. Let's not forget the hope we have in the resurrection. Let's support one another and pray for each other and continue to have faith and step up with obedience. Let me pray for you. Father God, thank you for the Kingdom Kids. Thank you that I'm back here with my friends. I just praise you for their faithfulness. I praise you for the ways you're blessing us. And I, I pray that uh, my friends and all of us at Parkwood would look to see you in the midst of all of this, your blessings, your teachings. I just pray that you help us to find ways to support one another through prayer and through actions. Please help us to be obedient in all things and that when we are weak and we are struggling with faith that we will call out to you our god of faith our god of comfort and our god of hope knowing that you have already conquered everything we're facing and we can trust you we praise you in all things in jesus name amen see you next time kingdom kids Hi Kingdom Kids, it's Missy Vaughn here. Thank you so much for joining us for another weekly lesson. If you have already started school, we are praying that it is going well. We are praying that this 2020-2021 school year, however it may look, like we are praying that it is awesome. So whether you are in person or virtually, we are praying for you and may it be a great one and may you be successful. We are so thankful for this opportunity to learn. And so now we're gonna learn about a little bit what the Bible has for us. So we looked at the story of Joshua and Caleb and we know that Moses had sent in 12 men to scout out the land, the land of Canaan. That's where God had told them that they were to go. But 10 men said that yes, the land was fruitful and it was great, but only two men said, yes, that is where God wants us. The other 10 were afraid of the big Canaanites. They said, why would God take us there? But the other two men, Joshua and Caleb said, if God has said that that land is for us, he will provide, he will um, just open the way for us to be there and for them to be safe. So sometimes it's okay to go with against the flow. And so as Christians, we know that we are in this world, but not of it. So although some people may side a little way and say, well, we're going to do this, you know that if that goes against what God says, we are to do what God says. So it's okay sometimes to be a little different or to not just always go with the flow. We are to do what God has called us to do to our bay or parents and to do things the Christian way. And so for today's activity, we are going to play I Spy with My Little Eye. So just like these two men were spies, we are going to play I Spy. And so around this room, there's a couple items. I have made a list and with you, we are going to play I Spy with My Little Eye. So, all right, the first one I have for us today is I Spy with My Little Eye, something red. So now look around and let me know if you see something red. Okay, if you found that Bible that's all the way in that corner, then you got it right. All right, let's try it again. So I spy with my little eye, something white. So now look around, there's a couple di different options. 
Maybe it's the book in this little corner right here, or maybe it's the light fixture, or maybe it's the little bit of white in this painting, or maybe it's this uh, coffee mug. All right, if you guessed this coffee mug, then you are right. Okay, we've got two more. I spy with my little eye something pink. Let's see, there's a few options. And if you guessed this flower pen, then you got it right. All right, for this last one, it might be a little harder to see. I spy with my little eye something yellow. So look around this room, this frame, and let me know if you see something yellow. Okay, friends, if you guess this uh, baseball cap, then you got it right. So what you are going to do is you are going to compile a list. So you're going to make a list of different items around your house and then find someone that can play with you. And so you are going to say, I spy with my little eye, something red. And then if they guess that Bible, then they're right. So you got the idea. So I hope that, that you have a lot of fun just doing this with your family members or your neighbors. And as always, please know that we are praying for you and that we are so thankful for all of our kingdom kids and we can't wait to see you. See you next time. Bye.